Oh yeah, I'm going to talk about bows. Knowledgeable stuff that you should think about. Pondering bow shapes. And if you watch some of my videos, you know that I favor wider, flatter bows. And I kind of take that from the West Coast paddle bows. And, and that's about it. I've got some notes that I think I'm gonna drop on you here. First of all, first of all, <laughs> this has turned out to be a magnificent little bow. I evened it up, nice tiller, nice even tiller, and I was just outside shooting some stuff and having some fun and impressing myself. And you can see <laughs> how dead flat it is along there. And it's a testament to this wide flat design and you know what after this sinew starts tightening up again it's probably going to go into some reflex that's good now i wondered about it i've got it's just red oak with a nice power layer of sinew layer second layer and then a third running down the center to kind of humpify it even though that the wood itself is humped i have turned this way too heavy bow and that's why the belly failed originally and it failed in a weird way it wasn't just a long growth lines it was self-destructing it was splitting and popping apart and as you saw I repaired it with Gorilla Glue and I am drawing it to 45 pounds I don't know what the draw length is that's how I roll 45 pounds and it's fast I was daydreaming earlier today that I should make some special arrows Flight arrows, goose feathers have less resistance than less resistance than turkey feathers. Figure out the weight. I bet this would be one humdinger of a flight ball. I should I should state it as a fact. I bet you, with careful arrow making, I bet you I can I can shoot over 200 yards with this thing, which obviously is not world championship flight ball, but it's pretty darn good. You know, with this modest little bow that just several days ago <laughs> was self-destructing, crumbling apart, and was useless. Now, this is a, a beauty bow. I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to drop a tip on you. And I, this came to me because I was toying around a long time ago with one of my rawhide back paddle bows. Back when I was beginning to rawhide back paddle bows, mine, the JRPBs. And I thought, you know what I'm gonna do? And this is not my invention, of course. It's a, it's a finish that a lot of people use. Is you take epoxy, two-part epoxy, thin it with acetone, then paint it on. It allows it to soak in. It makes a beautiful finish. But with the paddle bow I did it on, on the rawhide, it made a crackling. It's the only, it's the only rawhide back JRPB JR paddle bow that I ever had that just cracked evenly, that it just let loose, the rawhide just cracked. However, tension and compression are different, so imagine this. Picture this as it were. And this would make this bow stronger, but I'm not really a fan of epoxy. I could do that again. Two part epoxy, five minute, ten minute, half an hour, whatever, it doesn't matter. Mix it really thin with acetone and then paint it on the belly. It would soak into the wood. And maybe if there were any other potential future fissures or cracks would get in there, strengthify, and because it crackled my paddle bow on the rawhide, made it brittle, it might add a little strength to the belly. It, that's a technique you might try if you're not adverse to to um, two-part epoxy and mixing it with acetone, a nasty, nasty solvent. Maybe you have a bow that's suffering compression problems. Maybe you're starting to get those chrysals, those compression lines. Maybe if you paint the belly with a super thin layer of epoxy mixed down with acetone, be careful. Don't do it in, in the house. Well ventilated area, do not splash it in your eyes. There's my disclaimer. It might soak in there and it might make that belly hard enough. And sometimes it's just a game of inches. You just need to bump it over that little ridge there. Maybe that epoxy soaked in to the belly would make it structurally strong enough to cure those chrysals. Look at that. You might, I might have just come up with something. Who knows? I'm tricky that way. But It's very rare that I make a bow that I think is great and I don't sell it. Because I like money. 
just like the next, I'm a free market kind of guy. I'm a conservative, a monetarily conservative person. It's mine. It's all mine. I'm going to make a quiver and some arrows for it. Okay, next up, intermission. So there I was, bidding on eBay for that you stave. I was going to make a you longbow for somebody. And I was sniped at the last minute, decided I was going to spend my money on the stupidest thing I could come up with. Bought a unicycle, never looked back. That was in my 40s. This is not that unicycle. That was a $100 cheapie that I learned how to ride on. And then I wound up getting some good ones. A Nimbus, and then this Chris Holm, KH24. I stripped the blue paint off it. It's just bare aluminum alloy. Magura brake, and that's it. I just go out there, set the clock, and ride an hour a day on the trails or run. Next up, this is a... <laughs> Wonderful bow. This is in progress. I put the rawhide on the back. Did the sinew wrapping on the tips last night. You can really see the advantage on a short bow kicking up the tips like that. The string's not going to slide off. This is, I think, called for. This is a wonderful bow. I'm going to get it down below 50 pounds. There's still some sanding to do on it. But, oh yeah. Now I was thinking, this is a sophisticated bow. Look at that. It's got that kicked up tip, raw height on the back, sinew right there. It's going to have a paint job. Now, sometimes the bows speak to me. They don't say, hey, John, move me over there. This one, because of the color of the raw hide and just the look of it with the sinew, this reminds me of bone. And so I'm thinking of doing kind of a, a chalky wash of white and then the paint job on it. Magic ball, man. Medicine ball. I haven't quite schemed it out yet, but this is going to be great. And then I do things in pair. I bought two pairs of rawhide, and so I took this bow I'm rehabbing, and it looks kind of funny with the recurves on it, I admit that. But when it's strung, tray elegant. And this is a rehab. This was just a bow sitting in my corner for years. It's at one of that wild paint job with the black lines and the spots and that incredibly uh, complicated paint scheme. I redid the recurves, rawhide backed it, and I'm going to do some kind of paint job on it. This one's not called for, so maybe I'll do this in the bone, the bone style with the chalky whitewash. Well, that is it. That is it. It's my things on bows. Gentle recurve, kicked up tips. And our learning bow. This bow is teaching me stuff. Give it a try if you want to experiment. I'm probably not going to do it on this, but the two part epoxy with the acetone on the belly of a bow that's showing some compression failure. It'd be worth your while. Have a good one. Brush your teeth every day. Ride your unicycle an hour a day. It's good for your balance. I'm not going to show you me riding it. The only person that appreciates unicycle riding is the one that's on the unicycle. Otherwise, I admit it, you look like a dork. <laughs>